for that. That's a bit wide. I call uh, Nikki Wagner. Much, Mr. Chair. Um, I speak to right, talk to this bill. This bill is a sensible, practical response to the situation in Canterbury, and there are no hidden agendas. Now, I just want to look at the two major provisions in this bill. The first is about changing the date that commissioners must be replaced by electorate councillors at Environment Canterbury. Originally, the Principal Act prescribed 2013 as the date that elections will be held. But this bill specifies that their next election will occur in 2016, at the same time as the local authority election. Now, what's the reason for the change? Now, the change is that the seven appointed commissioners that are acting as ECAN's governing body since 2010 have been doing a particularly good job. And because of the disruption caused by the earthquake, and because there's still a need to complete the Canterbury Water Management Strategy, they need to remain. Now, I think we should look at this strategy. This Canterbury Water Management Strategy is community-based, it's collaborative, and it's well-supported throughout the province. The zone committees have been set up, and they're in the process of reporting back. And the next step is to complete that work and to give the strategy statutory backing. And it's because of the time and the energy and the input of all those people that is involved that it's felt that this should be completed before the commissioners have finished their job. And that the commissioners should therefore have the possibility of remaining until 2016. However, there is also a ministerial review required, and that ministerial review must begin before the 1st of March 2014. And that review covers several things. It covers the governance structure of ECAN, it covers the membership of ECAN, and it covers the powers and the functions of ECAN. Now, it was interesting that there was only three submissions about this review, and all those three submissions supported the idea of the review. And the inclusion of this clause reflects the intention to transition back to regional governance for Canterbury, back to democracy, and to identify the best long-term government solution to the Canterbury region. Now, it's very interesting listening to the submitters. It is true that the majority of submitters were against the extension of the period of time that ECAN should be managed, but their opposition was based on the disapproval of the lack of democratic elections, and we've heard the debate from the House as well. This was the opinion of many of the submitters to the original bill. That's what they were concerned about. They feared that they would not get a result if they didn't have democratic elections. But it has been very interesting listening to those submitters that looking back on those times since the commissions have been there, that there was general agreement that the commissioners have actually done a very good job, that they had worked well with stakeholders, that they were delivering the Canterbury Water Management Strategy, which was community-based and collaborative, and it was also noted that their relationship with Tangata Whenua, that's Naitahu, was particularly improved and that it had always been bumpy with the old ECAN Council. Now there's a very tangible example of this relationship and the value of this relationship. What they've been able to do is to deliver, deli deliver a collaborative clean-up of Lake Tiwaihora. Now, that's Lake Ellesmere. Now, you may be aware that Lake Ellesmere has been in a bad state for a long time. The clean-up was well overdue. ECAN had been unable to negotiate a collaboration. That has happened. The commissioners have got it in place, and that work is being done. So, despite the fears of the submitters to the original bill, the fears that have not been recognised, and in fact most submitters accepted that the time that the commissioners had been had been extremely effective, and I believe that the fears of the people for this bill will be the same. So, I support this bill to the House. I might call uh, Andrew Williams. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chair. I take a call on behalf of New Zealand First and we oppose